Right then guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the 5th round in my Classic Cars Sprint Championship on F1 2017. And looking at the Drivers' Championship standings, the leader, who unsurprisingly is driving a V10 powered Ferrari F2004, has only amassed 14 points. 14 points all season, that is not that high at all, but then again of course, that is largely due to the rule where the starting grid at every race is a reverse of the current Drivers' Championship standings. But then again, four drivers still haven't scored any points at all, and one of them is driving this car, the McLaren MP4-23. I've put this car as the ones to watch because, well, partly because they've already won a race this season, the other McLaren driver actually won the Spanish Grand Prix in this series. But um, no, honestly, this car, it's starting towards the front, 4th place one of the drivers is starting in. 4th place, but this car, it's um, a V8 powered Mercedes V8 powered, but also from the 2008 season. So this is just before, in fact, maybe the same year that they had the engine freeze. I'm not quite sure when in 2008 the engine development freeze was brought in, but it's Mercedes powered, it's V8, but it should be more powerful than most of the other V8 powered cars here and starting in 4th place he should be in a decent position to at least score some points and we've shown that a McLaren can actually win a race. So we've got the starting grid, we've got two Renaults starting at the front as always. A Red Bull which still hasn't scored points starting in 3rd, um, as I've already said a McLaren in 4th, then you've got another Renault in 5th, a F2007 in 6th, my teammate starting in 10th and then there's me, one of the championship contenders. I've got five points less than the current championship leader, but still, I'm still high up in the drivers' championship standings in 16th place. Is where I'll be starting for this Grand Prix. So that means in the championship, I'm fifth. So of course, it's a reverse of the current uh, drivers' championship standings. Is starting grid. So the five lights are about to come on as the 2017 Classic Cars race around the circuit shield Villeneuve is underway and I've got a lot of cars to get past and not a lot of track to be able to do it in but amazingly I've overtaken four people already but heading into the first corner there's already been a log jam tap the back of that Ferrari F2007 there there's a Red Bull which has been able to successfully go around my outside there so I've actually lost one position down to 13th place but the circuit shield feel a quite a high speed circuit so there's plenty of opportunities for me to use the V10 power to get past a lot of these V8 runners. There's a Red Bull, a Renault, an F2007. There's a lot of V8 powered cars just up ahead and thankfully a lot of V10 powered cars behind me already. So we're going to try and re-overtake that Red Bull and I think I've been able to do that. So there you go. I have been able to do that. So that means I'm up back up into 12th place. Still nowhere near a points position. I need to get into 6th place to be able to score a point. But there's one of the incredibly slow moving 2006 runners in a straight line. That Renault has got no hope compared to my F2002 and actually been able to easily get past a V8 powered Ferrari. So that means I must be up into 11th place, 10th place actually, make that 9th. I'm, I'm overtaking cars so quickly, I've already lost track. I'm still 3 positions though away from being in a points position. But up ahead there's a 2010 Red Bull. So again another opportunity down the start finish straight to be able to use the V10 power. And actually... I didn't think I was going to catch up in time, then it turned out I did, went to the outside line, got out on the grass, and well, unsurprisingly, lost all grip to my front right tyre at least. So, overtake failed there, but let's have a look at the race start from the Red Bull, and once again, those 2006 Renaults got off to a poor start. That always happens, it just seems to me, 
It just seems to be in this championship, if you start at the, if you start at the front, you'll get a horrendous start. And those Renaults, they're from the launch control era. Launch control, trash control, mass dampers. I don't think mass dampers will have any effect on the start, but those Renaults should be... You know, there should be nothing wrong with them at the start, and they've been passed by a 2008 McLaren, which, yes, is a quicker car overall, but it doesn't have traction control. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So we got a Red Bull up into first. That McLaren, I said he was one to watch. He's up into second place already. Lewis Hamilton, the second most successful driver ever around the Circuit Shield Villeneuve. He never won with that car. He could well have done, but then again, he crashed in the pit lane, crashed into the back of Kimi Raikkonen, and then Rosberg crashed into the back of him. So that MP4-23, a missed opportunity in the real-life season, but it could recover that here. So trying to get past that Red Bull once again. He actually nearly forced me out to the grass again there for the second time, but I've been able to pass him. And there's another F2007 into the hairpin, slight bit of contact, but he's got out ahead of me. But then again, V10 power, which actually, he did not leave me a lot of room there, but thankfully, I went out onto the grass there slightly, but I was able to keep control of the car, and I'm up into seventh place. Now this is slightly further on, up the field. So we got an F2007 up in fifth. Actually, the F2007s, a lot of them are towards the top end of the field. This one, though, is actually in a points position, so he's doing all right. He's going to try and slowly get past the Renault, but oh, there we go. There is a F2002. That will be my teammate, Waldmuller, I believe his name is. So that means the F2007 down in sixth. Now, we saw how easily that F2002, my teammate, overtook the Renault. And it is so difficult. There's actually incredibly close racing. I reckon if you had a championship with just the 2006 Renault, 2007 Ferrari and 2008 McLaren, you would have some incredibly close racing. At least for a short while anyway. But um, I was on the back of that train actually. We saw my teammate got past just a few seconds ago. And I've now passed one of them. So two laps into the Grand Prix one well, on the third lap. Two laps completed. And I've got into a points position. I started in 16th place. And I'm up into 6th. So that's one point scored. And of course because of the reverse of the um, of the Drivers' Championship standings on the starting grid. Because of that, none of the Championship contenders overtook me at the start. Which means I'm ahead of all of them. It means none of them are actually in a point scoring position. But I'm going to try and get past... Well that was handy. It looks like that Renault locked up. And I think potentially held up that F2007. Either way, I was going to get past them pretty easily down this um, this back straight. So we'll have a look at what happened there. So here is the F2007, who was just ahead of me. He was in fifth place. Now, obviously, it was a matter of time before he was going to lose the position to me. But I think... Well, I think he just got boxed in because I was to his right-hand side... And the Renault was in front of him. So actually, I think he universally got boxed in. So yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, the Renault locked up, went incredibly slowly and wide. But he couldn't move to the right-hand side because I was there. Although the Ferrari did actually pass the Renault well, side by side. But he's got track position and he's just about got the straight line speed. There is a noticeable power um, difference between the 2006 Renault engine and 2007 Ferrari engine. Not massive, but there is a difference as we've already established. That Ferrari can slowly claw its way past and yeah that Renault just locked up and costly mistake those Renault drivers terrible at starts terrible at breaking into certain corners seemingly these Renaults I mean I still maintain that if we had a, well okay there goes by a V10 powered car just in case we forgot how quick that F2004 was in a straight line at the very least there we go we just got it reminded to us but I still maintain the fact that if we had a wet race, that Renault would be right up there. Probably the third quickest car. It'd probably be quicker than an F2002. I'd rather drive it than an F2002 because it'd be easier. But the current race order, we've got a 2010 Red Bull, 2008 McLaren, then it's my teammate, then it's myself. So we're having a look at the race leader, the current race leader, who is in the 2010 Red Bull. Incredibly quick car, the second, maybe third quickest car in this championship around a lap. But then the straight line... Not that quick. Topped out at 184 miles an hour. And yes, the circuit shield Villeneuve, it's not quite Monza, it's not quite Spa, but it is still a track. It, it's effectively an oval. If you look at it from an overhead 
perspective, it's an oval with a couple of chicanes. Straight line speed is important. And that's why this McLaren, I said it's one to watch. Top speed, 190. Oh, just, just about ticked over to 191 miles an hour. So this McLaren, I'm not sure if it's quicker around the lap, but it's quicker in a straight line, and he's not losing that much time. At the very least, he's he can still see the Red Bull in front of him. So we got a battle for the lead going on. And then, well, not really a battle for fifth place, to be honest. Um, I've run out of adjectives to describe the difference in speed between the F2004 or the V10-powered cars versus the V8-powered cars. Because it's just a torrent of speed, that V10 F2004. And yeah, the F2007 just cannot compete. Not down a straight, in a corner possibly, but not down a straight. So... Here we are, a replay of what happened on board from the F2007. I'll tell you what, the F2007s, they've seen a lot of action. The sponsors would be very happy because they've got a lot of screen time. But looking like not a lot of action. I mean, this is the final F2007 in a points position in sixth place. So, effectively, it's weird to consider the F2007 Ferrari a backmarker team. They're happy to get track time and they'll be incredibly lucky to score points. Sounds like Minardi, but anyway. My teammate just set the fastest lap, then I just just about beat him to the fastest lap. I think beat him by a few hundreds, maybe a few thousands. And then Benjamin Coppens, the championship leader, just about beat my fastest lap. He's in an F2004, so he should be theoretically beating my lap times slightly. He's in a slightly quicker car, although they're very similar. There we go, there's the McLaren up ahead. We're on the final lap of the Grand Prix, though. Myself and Waldmuller, we've caught up in the F2002s, but not quickly enough. This is why this is a five-lap race championship, to give everyone a fair opportunity of winning and scoring points. Because if you add it as more laps, it's just like my F1 2002 reverse grid championship all over again. But the 2010 Red Bull is going to win the Canadian Grand Prix, and he hadn't scored any points up until this Grand Prix. Not that particular driver. He had scored no points, he's gone from 0 to 10. I finished 4th, so that is 3 points. That means finally I'm into double figures. And here we've got the battle for 2nd, because we kind of cut away from it, looking at the leader and then myself. But this 2008 McLaren could have won the real-life Grand Prix. It didn't, fundamentally. Kubica did in the BMW Sauber. But there we go, he's finished 2nd at this Grand Prix. So there you go, he's beaten... He's beaten all of the V10 powered cars. I mean, he's only just lost out to a Red Bull, and that's two years newer, and hasn't got groove tyres. So, you know, that Red Bull's got a lot of advantages. It is a quicker car, just factually it is. And then, amazingly, the F2007, I said it, it's still weird that we're talking, we're looking at this car, and I'm talking about it as if it is a backmarker team, but it sort of is. It is sort of like the Sauber, the Haas, the modern day Haas. You know, one of the slower teams, lucky to score points in that car, just has. So there we go, a 2010 Red Bull from a 2008 McLaren. Both of those drivers hadn't actually scored any points until heading into this Grand Prix, but thanks to the reverse drivers' championship starting grids, they've scored 10 and 6. And then there's my teammate in third, I'm in fourth. And then it was, I think, Benjamin Coppins in fifth at an F2007, as we saw in sixth. And then if you look towards the back, it's... A myriad of V8 powered cars. In fact, actually, I believe all of the V10 powered cars finished in the top 10. So that's an achievement there and also proves once again how much of a um, straight line speed orientated circuit this is. Drivers Championship, I'm only two points behind Benjamin Coppens. Two points behind. I've been Mr. Consistent in this championship. I've scored points at every single Grand Prix. And, well, consistency, it's finally paying off. It's finally starting to work out for me. It would eventually. I'm only two points behind the leader. And we've still got two drivers that haven't scored points. And, unsurprisingly, they're in Renaults. And there you've got the starting and finishing positions of all of the drivers. So it is an incredibly close championship. One round left to go. And if you look at the drivers' championship standings, I'll flash them back up. If you look at them, mathematically, the top... 14, 13, it depends on that driver who's got 4 points, it depends on his finishing positions. But let's just say for simplicity's sake, mathematically, 14 drivers could win the Drivers' Championship heading into the final round of the season. 
But where is the final round? We've already done Monza, we've done Circuit to Villeneuve, we've done Silverstone, we've done some iconic circuits. Although it's pretty plainly evident if you just look at the tracks and also if you look at the um, if you look at the drivers' championship standings, that the calendar and the tracks have been very much geared towards the V10 cars. Lots of power tracks, and that's why the final round in the season is the exact antithesis of that. Because it's Monaco. What better place is there to hold the final race in a championship? And when you think about it, it's quite clever because every single driver is going to be desperate to try and make up possessions. Bearing in mind, of course, you only score points if you finish in the top six. So you'll be desperate to make up possessions. I'll be desperate to make up possessions. I need to score three points to win the championship. And that's assuming that Benjamin Coppins doesn't score any. So I need to make up 15 possessions in five laps around Monaco. Honestly, I have no idea how it's going to play out. All I know is that it's a very different track from the ones we've seen. 14 drivers mathematically can win the championship, so is anybody's game. So yes, I'll see you guys, I think next week, for the final round in this sprint championship, where it's anybody's guess who's going to win the championship. Be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments who you reckon will win the championship, what car do you reckon will win the championship, and which car do you reckon will win the Monaco Grand Prix, because, well, who knows. It's F1 2017, it's classic cars, but it's Monaco, so it's anybody's guess. So, yes, guys, I'll see you then.